just got to say, we're going to get started. Um, each senior has chosen a special person to share on their behalf. Uh, years ago, I used to speak to the speakers, and I got to think, you know, it would be great for the seniors to be able to speak who they would like to share. And so, Ryan's going to come up and share a little bit of biographical information on each senior, and then we'll have the speakers uh, for each senior. So, Ryan, come on up, and we'll start with Will Armitrout. Will Armstrong is graduating from Oak Grove Middle or Oak Grove High School on Friday, May 27th. He is part of the National Honor Society, band, cross country team, track and field, and track and field. His awards include a Heisman High School Scholarship winner and highest average in physical education and health. Will has also received a certification in Photoshop, Excel, Excel Excerpt, Expert, Word, and PowerPoint. He plans to attend UNC Charlotte in the fall. Will's godmother, Patty Russell, will now share. something I was like oh dear what's what's up but I was honored when he asked me if I would do this for him and of course I didn't hesitate about 18 years ago <clears throat> my husband Randy and I were asked another Tory question we were asked to be Will's godparents and that was an honor we said absolutely little did we know how much he would bless our lives I started babysitting him when he was two months old. He was such a cute baby, and he's still kind of cute, too. <laughs> I say so myself. I told him I wouldn't embarrass him too bad. He was such a cute baby, and he would go to preschool with me. I'm a preschool teacher, so he was in my class. Bless his heart, he had me at home, and then he had me for a teacher, too. He was a very smart little boy, and of course, as you heard, he still is. I've watched him grow physically, academically, and spiritually. He went to the Christian preschool, and I still can see him graduating that night in this little red cap and gown. And he went to Bible school here in Awana, and then of course he moved up to the youth program where he was always active. He was baptized along with his mom and dad, that was such a proud moment for all of us. Will's been busy. He's played baseball, basketball, ran cross country for Oak Grove, and when he was in middle school, he played in the band. Will was six years old when my grandson Jacob was born, and they're both only children, so Will kind of adopted J Jacob as his little brother. He's always letting tag along everywhere, even to youth now that Jacob is involved in you and uh, they've been able to do some things together they go to the pool and Will always lets him hang out with him and his buddies Jacob thinks he's as big as, as Will is and Will's parents have made sure that God has been first in his life family's also important we've been vacationing together for all 18 years the first year, bless his heart, in their room, there wasn't room for his uh, court crib, so we had to put it in the closet, and he slept in the closet. And we have a lot of family gatherings, of course. And as you heard, Will will be attending UNC Charlotte, studying engineering. I have no doubt that he'll stay on the right track, because God is first, and he's followed Jesus all these years. I would like to read Romans 12, 2, and I hope this verse may become to our life first, Will. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I have no doubt that will is going to maintain that. Will, continue to be who you are. Stand up for what's right and keep your sense of humor. He's got one. Stay true to yourself. I couldn't be more prouder of you than I am right now. I love you and you're very special to us. And I do want to tell one little story about Will. We, we were at Brewster's. This is, I even brought up one of the napkins because I want Will to always have a napkin with him. We were at Brewster's on Main Street one time and the wind, the wind was blowing really, really hard. Will couldn't have been maybe 30 years old and his napkin <laughs> blew off and he starts crying and running after it and he's yelling, my napkin, my napkin. So uh, we've never let him forget that. My nephew Evan uh, has a good time picking on him about things. So that's, I won't tell any stories about Evan and Will and how they got along growing up together. But anyway, that's my Will. Love you, buddy. <laughs> from Wesleyan Christian Academy on Friday, May 27th. Since the sixth grade, he has played on the soccer, on the school soccer teams, including the 2019 state championship team, and was the varsity captain for the 2021 season. From sixth to twelfth grade, he was on the wrestling team, competing on, a vars on varsity for three years, and was on the varsity swim team this school year. Carter received a coach's award in both soccer and wrestling, and has been a part of the club soccer team, PTSC. His community involvement includes volunteer coaching for recreational soccer league, along with officiating local youth soccer. He has also been a part of the OVBC Tech team in the fall. In the, in the fall, Carter will attend Taylor University in Indiana to pursue an engineering degree and continue playing soccer. Carter's mom, April, will now share. Carter's our last. Um, we've been through this a few times. Um, and so we're getting ready to be empty testers, which we'll talk about. But I um, want to definitely celebrate Carter and just come and enjoy every moment that we have before he graduates and leaves um, to Indiana in the fall. So when I think about Carter, um, some of the main things that come to mind is how he is a servant leader who leads by example. Um, he has always had a heart for others, um, for helping them or taking care of them. Um, when he was little, he would, like if he got sick, he had to go to the pediatrician. He would you know, be running 102 fever and not feeling good. And he'd go to leave and he'd say, he'd say can I have a sticker? Can I leave for my sister? Getting one. And one for my brother? <laughs> So Carter would leave the pediatrician every time when he felt bad with three treats so that he could share with his brother and sister. Um, even he finds ways, um, and he probably doesn't even realize that it, it means a lot, but like he'll come in from his long day off the soccer field um, at 9 o'clock at night and then say, like, hey, mom, how's your day? How was yesterday? You know, and just like um, those little things that, that he does to remind us how much he cares about us and loves us too. Um, on the soccer field um, with his friends, he's always been the one to help pick up the water bottles or collect the equipment or put it out or things like that. And not because he was asked to or expected to, but just that was his way, his quiet way to, to find ways to leave. Um, of course, he's been involved in the tech teams here at church and at school. Um, he is enjoyed his time working um, with Robert and the others and, and we as parents appreciate um, those relationships that have been built throughout the years. Um, Carter's very bright and has always been very witty. 
Um, even when he was little, um, he just catch on to things really quick, and um, he, I can't think of a great example, but even as a little guy, he would um, say funny things and just find ways to make people laugh. Um, one of the other things that I love about you, Carter, is that you're driven, um, you're self-motivated, you're hardworking, um, and this is taking you far to this point and it will continue to take you far in life. Um, he's excelled in the classroom and sports. He's played soccer and um, he swam this year for the first time, which he did really well on his own, and then he wrestled in the past three. Carter is super competitive. I don't know if any of you know him well, um, but whether it's on the field or even playing board games with Mimi and Popsicle and his brothers and sister in the past. Um, he is super competitive. Um, he wants to do a good job. He wants to um, have fun at it as well. But even in like, just recently, the senior class had a huge water gun fight that lasted for weeks and super competitive. And um, just enjoys being a part of different activities. He's a great friend um, to his siblings and to many, many um, classmates at school. And he also um, loves to figure things out. He's quite the dexter to you in a quiet way. Um, one time, he even figured out how to kind of reverse engineer his sister's doorknob so that it opened like in the reverse direction that it normally would. And then as soon as she opened it, it started popping with little firecrackers. Um, so, hence the engineering, even from a young age. Um, he loves deeply, even though he's quiet about how he loves others. Um, and Carter, we want you to know that we love you just as deeply. We're thankful for our village, um, which involves many people here at church, um, at his school, and family, of course, through the years. And um, we're also thankful for those that you um, will meet as you move into the future at Taylor and beyond. Let the Lord lead you, Carter, as you move forward. Um, let He comfort you and guide you through all that you do. And know that we love you unconditionally and that we will always be your biggest fan. Nicole Green will graduate from Wheatmore High School on Wednesday, June 8th, where she is in the Beta Club and the National Honor Society. In the fall, she will attend Appalachian State University to study speech pathology. Nicole's sister, Kayla Green Brooks, will now share.
I'm sure mom and dad miss their baby girl that always needed them, um, but just now needs them in a different way. Me and Derek miss our little sister that would steal all the attention from us, <laughs> or all the times that we were forced to babysit you against our will. <laughs> You've grown up so fast, Nicole. The bitterness of time is that it passes so gradually and so subtly, yet so quickly at the same time. And we blink, and it's gone. However, the sweetness of time is that you grow into exactly who God created you to be. And you become and you do all these new and exciting things. So while we miss the baby Nicole, we cherish all the new and exciting things that are unfolding now. Through life experiences and milestones, and you've seen your share of good and bad ones, um, your character has been developed, and your personality has come to life. You've worked so hard throughout high school, um, and have excelled at everything you put your mind to. You're very smart, and I know you're going to continue that as you go through college. We are so proud of all your accomplishments, um, and I, for one, am proud, and I've come to appreciate you more and more as we both get older, and I appreciate our friendship. As you get ready to head to college in the fall, my prayer for you would be that you seek first the Lord and just keep your eyes fixed on Him, always. He will guide you down the path he has set for you. These next four years are going to be some of the most transformative years of your life. They will challenge you in ways that you can't even imagine right now. They will also be fun as you meet new people, and you're going to learn a lot of new things. But just always know that it's okay to have days where you might miss us, where you might miss home. I hope you miss us. <laughs> um, it's okay to have days where you might feel lonely um, or maybe overwhelmed. It's okay to mess up and make mistakes, but learn and grow from them. Always know that we will all be right here back home cheering you on, and these next four years are going to fly by. They're going to go so quickly, so try to soak in every moment and enjoy this college experience. Because like I said, it's going to help to mold you into who you're going to be. Um, we love you, Nicole, and are so excited to see your story continue to unfold. LTD and Fresh Cuts Grocery, and is currently working at Hugo's Express Car Wash. Carson's plan is to become a welder with possible training through Guilford Technical Community College. Carson's dad, Matt, will not share. Okay. How y'all doing? <laughs> y'all know this guy? Alright, let me start off. Um, if you look around real close on the floor, you'll see glitter somewhere. It's red. Um, first birthday right here. Is red. I took notes this morning, riding Mount Airy. I threw them out the window. Carry on and on to tell stories about running up the steps with a dog chasing your. Um, never mind. I don't think he's talking about it. We will go into those details about the little cheese bites with um, your sister and, you know, being slapped with bologna. The best grandparents ever. When you fly to the moon, go to college. Don't live in my house near 25. <laughs> um, you've been my rock. When I was asked to do this, I didn't want to. Got home this family experienced some pretty tough stuff this year. And uh, he helped me together. I told you, 
but this church has been amazing for him. Robert has been amazing for him. By all the youth that has supported him through his forerunner blowing up, to um, putting up with him ripping his um, metal in the youth room. If you've never heard him play guitar, you don't know what you're missing. Um, he's met a wonderful young lady. I think he cherishes him, and I think he feels the same. His sister. <laughs> All I can say about her is that um, I think she loves him unconditionally. If she could stand up here and speak, probably have about two hours. You know. um, Carson has been just the most amazing thing that's happened to us. And by the way, um, we didn't find out what you were going to be. She had a girl. I had a boy. The doctor said, you want to know? We said, absolutely not. So when he was brought on, you should have saw that lady over there. So I was like, dang, I was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a big mush. Um, this, this shell, as I've gotten older, has turned into a big cloud of pudding. Um, I've always told him that I screwed up so you didn't have to. But I realized that no matter how much I screwed up, he's still going to. But with this family regular support, you get up for it. That's good. Look, 
I, I think everybody in this room would say, hey, study hard, work hard, wherever you may be, but it's not about the accolades, it's not about the grades, it's not about the recognition. You're not defined by that. So when you walk into a college classroom, when you walk into a workplace, that is not the defining moment for you. Your worth and your value are immeasurable. The second thing I have with that is do not give yourself to that which is in vain. Do not give yourself away to the world. Ms. Patty read a verse while ago. It's a very important thing about that. Do not conform to this world. The third thing is this. Guard and protect your mind and heart. Guard and protect your mind and heart. You will be infiltrated from this point forward in ways that you've never experienced before. It, you will. And I can tell you that from somebody who stood here, unfortunately, he said 11 years ago, uh, and was looking upon what it would look like to go to Carolina, what it would look like to then go to seminary, what it would look like to get married, what it would look like to have a child. But I can tell you this, is that it's very important you guard your and protect your mind and heart. They are very important. The third thing is this, and I encourage this whether uh, in the workplace or whether in school, but take a Sabbath. I remember the same thing 11 years ago. Uh, two people in this room shared that. Their names were Michelle Gallimore and Ryan Corby. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't, I've heard that before, but I'm just going to kind of, kind of think that's a side. I remember my junior year of college in Carolina is really when I, when I was kind of really low point, so to speak. And I just remember thinking back on that. So I asked myself, what does it look like to take a Sabbath? And here's, here's what I'm kind of encouraging you to do. Is prioritize to work hard and give yourself one day a week where you find rest. One day a week where you, you don't do schoolwork, you're not focused on work, that you find a way to find rest, you spend time with the Lord, and you, you completely just decelerate and have rest. If I can encourage you with anything in school, is that that would help you well to sustain, to endure in the workplace that would help prepare your mind, prepare you well for that. Next thing is this, you always have time. You always have time. And that's something that's kind of, you're probably wondering why I'm saying that, and here's the reason why I'm saying that. A couple of things, one, business is not an excuse. I tell this in the view all the time, I don't like the word busy. Uh, and the reason why is because we all have the same amount of time. And so how you spend that time shows what you prioritize and what you value. And so when you go to college and you go to the workplace and you show that, what's it going to look like? Well, you always have time. So don't let that go by. Don't let that just, just go over somewhere else. Let that be useful. Let that be managed well. And so I wrote down priorit prioritization is key. Whether it's Jesus is central, whether that's your family, your friends, whether that's the things that you need before you, those are important. Reflect often. Reflect often. I don't do this that well, uh, so uh, I'm not a journaler. Uh, so some people like to journal, and it's pretty good to kind of keep track with your reflections. But here's one thing that reflections do. They develop a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude. Uh, as I could sit here and spend, I know as you mentioned that Kathy could spend two hours here. I think we could all, we could, we could spend a lot of time thinking through just a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving over what's transpired in our lives, even in the last year, two years. But for me, thinking back into past times of here with uh, different classes and looking at how the Lord's words. But as you go off in these next few years, they're the most transformative years, I would argue, in your life. It is when you become an individual more so than you are now. You continue to grow, you continue to evolve, you continue to learn things and deepen. And so as you do that, I would encourage you to reflect and treasure that growth and treasure that change and continue to remind yourself of what God has done in your life. The next thing I'm going to get here quickly is be teachable. If I can tell anybody in the room, I think anybody in this room could learn from that is to be teachable. One of the most rewarding attributes of any person is to be teachable. To be able to learn, to listen, to grow. The next thing is this, and I think every, I think your supporting family and friends in here would have totally agree with me, but take the, take good care of those close to you. Take good care of them. They helped you get here. They might be your family or your friends. 
but never neglect them. You could be 18 hours away, or you could be coming back home till night evening. But never neglect them. Take good care of them. You're here because of the grace of God, your work and efforts, but the people that are to your left and to your right in front of you, they're also a big part of that as well. So remember them, cherish them, and, I'll, and have them as an integral part of your life. And then lastly, I say this, find joy and treasure this season. There are days, look, like I want to trade it in for the world to not be with Kayla and Judah at this point, but there are days where I'd love to just go back to Carolina. There are days where I'd love to just enjoy walking on campus and enjoying my time again in college. But here I am, I think it's seven years later, and it's like it's went by so quick, and it goes. And people would tell you all the time, time goes quick, especially when we had Judah, it's like, everybody's like, hey, it's gonna go by really quick, and, you're, and it's like, wow, we're almost four months here, and it really is true. But I hope that you would find time to soak it in and, and flourish in it. Take time to enjoy it. Really find joy and treasure the season that's in your life, because it is what I call the most mobile season of your life, but it's also just a lot of fun and rewarding time. And so I pray that you would soak that in and structure it. As he said earlier, Robert had mentioned that I'm a pastor here uh, with the College of Career Group, the VU as we call it. And so I just want you to know that we're here to support you, to love you, and to help take care of you in any way that we can uh, as you go into this next journey. Uh, for us, that's why it's called a career. Uh, we're not limited to just those who go off to college. Uh, we also want to support those who are in the workplace. Matter of fact, our group right now is made up of more workplace than college. So I just want you to know that we are here for you. We, our values are exalt, encourage, engage. That's simply what we want to do. We want to exalt, see to exalt Jesus in everything we do. We strive to encourage one another, and we send to engage in the mission of God. That's who we're about. That's what we are part of. We meet each Thursday night during the school year at 6.30 for service. We also stream that. And then we meet on Sunday mornings for our fellowship. We have plenty of events and fellowships. We hear more about that in the weeks to come. But my prayer for you is this, that if you go off to college, that you would get plugged into a local church there. That you would get plugged in there to be part of a ministry. And hey, we'll be a supporting ministry along with them at your home church. We all do with you. In the workplace, it's the same way. And so with that, uh, I just want to spend a brief moment and just pray for us, and then uh, we'll do a presentation of gifts right after that. Let's pray. Father, you are so wonderful, so kind, and so good. And Father, I just pray, Lord, and thank you for these wonderful people that are around me right now. And God, just the testimony of your goodness that is in them and for them. And so God, I just pray for these graduates. For it is, it is wonderful to celebrate. It is wonderful to look forward to what is to come. And I pray, God, that for these four graduates, Lord, that they would seek first the kingdom of God. That, Lord, you would be preeminent. That you would be glorious to them. God, that they would taste and see that you were good. And Lord, when the, when the world tempts them, tries to prod them away, tries to bring them down, Lord, I pray that they would stand firm. Lord, that they would, they would have a posture of to live as Christ and to die as gain. And so, Lord, that they would live for you in all seasons and all ways. And so, Lord, I just pray that those of us in this room, whether we're family, friends, the local church, God, that we would support them, we would love them, we would be there for them, God, we would be a listening ear for them, maybe we would provide words of wisdom for them when they need counsel, but God, that we would continue to be an integral part of their journey. And so, Lord, I just thank you for this time that we've had, and Lord, we just pray we would honor these graduates as well. And just let me pray. Amen. All right, so on behalf of youth ministry, and also the church, we just want to say congratulations. Uh, these uh, resources that are being given to you right now, we hope and pray that in the days and weeks to come, 
uh, that you would dive into them, that it would help you uh, as you are in your journey and as you continue on, uh, not only in your faith, but as you grow and evolve. And so this is just a token of appreciation and a congratulations for all your accomplishments. So we congratulate you and we celebrate you. I got a lot of things written down here, but one of the things the Lord's been leading me to lately in this season of life is just to be more understated and say less. And there are two things I want to say. One is the three of you that are going away to school is find the church the first Sunday that you're there. Don't say, I'm going to wait till next Sunday. Well, next Sunday will pass, and all of a sudden, six months will pass, and you won't have found a church. Find a good church where you are. If you don't know good churches, then ask myself, ask him. We'll help you find a place where you can serve, and we'll, that will invest in you. And the other thing is this. Um, you know, Solomon said there's a time to be born and a time to die. And today... Just about an hour before the bank, my mom called me and said that my uncle in Asheville had passed away. And it just made me think about the brevity of life. And, you know, in this room, we have children. We have graduates. We have people who graduated, like Cameron and Philippe, and who are now in different seasons of life. And then I think about my uncle and other people that have meant something to me. And it reminds me of the verse in Ephesians 5 that talks about we must make the most of every opportunity. And that's what I would challenge you to, make the most of every opportunity. And the quote is said by Adrian Rogers, but others as well, that says, um, just a short time and this life has passed. Only what's done in Christ. It says some people say for Christ, but I say in Christ will last. So I encourage you to remember that and the scripture in Isaiah 40 verse 8 which says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The word of our God stands forever. You can trust him. You can trust his word. He's never going to change even when everything else seems like that it is. So I appreciate you. I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing what God do, does in your life. And this is not the end. This is a commissioning service. Sending you out to new opportunities, new journeys, to be a witness and to be the Lord's missionary wherever you go.